All right, everybody. Well, welcome to the wonderful world of auxiliary metrics. And uh, we'll be looking at several products, and these are all located on the national webpage at the Performance Measurement website, M for short. So let's start off with Lucy. That stands for Local Unit Charted Information. Monitor seven key performance measures. They are vessel safety checks, public education hours. Oh, before I go on, everybody mute their mics if you haven't done already. RBS partner visits, surface patrol hours, member training, membership levels, and new members joined. Now, Lucy is interactive. These four are interacting to get the cards they want. We will interact with Lucy to get the charts we want. And we do this here at the main page. Uh, in the, young, in the uh, long yellow drop-down box, we'll select for Southern. Okay. Uh, the first Southern is now selected. So let's go to the other tabs that you see below here. Let's start off with surface ops. Uh, and that's the blue tab. So here are surface patrol hours. And um, stand by. Oh, sorry. Uh, here are surface patrol hours. The aux and the, first, uh, the auxiliary as a whole and first southern are right on top. Top left. Divisions are below that. And they're grouped into what we call we call it the bullpen. That is a thick bordered black box. And it can, that can accommodate up to 20 divisions. Below the division pen are all the flotillas in the district. They're grouped by division and by district number, or rather by unit number. Lucy charts up to 100 flotillas, and this lets us graph all flotillas, even in the largest districts. Not even District 7 has 100 flotillas. Now, expect to do lots of scrolling. These are very large pages. They take up a lot of room. So there's a lot of information there. Now, here's a chart for uh, 11 South vessel safety checks. So people ask, what's the deal with the two colors? Well, the answer is they give you two trends and one. Show you what I'm talking about. The lighter bars show the number of vessel exams done in the years 2019 through 2023. That's the full year in each case, January 1st through December 31st. As you can see here, there were over 4,400 vessel safety checks performed in 2019. Now, since this is a May report, the dark red color shows exams on record for the year to date for the current year, 2024, and every prior year, 2019 through 2023. So looking at 2019 again, 11 South did about 1,600 VSCs in the January 1st through May 1st of that particular year. Over on the right is the current year, 2024. It's always in a dark shade because the current year is always just year to date. There is no full year. So over the course of the current year, the darker year, the year to date bars will grow while the lighter full year bars will remain the same. These two charts are from 11 South. The left is from February, 2023, and the right is from October, 2023. As stated, Lucy performs, uh, Lucy displays seven key performance measures. Each category has its own distinct color scheme. Here we see vessel safety checks for two flotillas in red. And there's public safety, uh, rather public education hours in orange. RBS partner visits in green. Crew hours underway in blue. Member training hours in yellow. Two members in purple. And finally, membership levels. Now, in this category, the red bar shows the current month's membership, May 2024 in this case. The blue bars of the previous years also show the May totals. It's month to month here. On the front page, you can specify, uh, you can use the same vertical axis scale, uh, or you can use, uh, uh, or you can use, uh, each unit use its own default vertical axis to fill up its graph. And both views are, are useful in their own way. Let me show you what I'm talking about. On the front page, you specify vertical scale with the yellow button at lower left. When not, activate, when not activated, the button looks like this. But when activated, 
the button looks pushed in like this. So let's use a practical example. In this example, we're not using the same vertical scale. Uh, the chart for Flotilla 1013 tops out at 1,800 hours. On the uh, this, this is on the, uh, the the axis at left, and the chart for Flotilla 1020 tops out at 70 hours. But as you can see, their bars fill up both graphs because they're using different scales. And this view is good for seeing year-to-year -year trends within each unit. So for example, you're a division commander. Uh, how's year-to-year -year going in each of your, in each of your flotillas? Well, this is all well and good, but what if, what if you want to compare units to each other? For that, you use the same vertical skill. So let's push the button on the front page and bam, here's what you get. It's the same data that we just saw, but now the graphs have the same vertical scale. The contrast between flotilla 1013 and 1020 in this category is now very clear. See, they're both using the same a scale that goes up to 1,800. Now, um, sometimes a flotilla will not log any hours in a particular activity. Not surprisingly, Air Station Republic uh, has performed no surface patrols. They're an aviation flotilla. Moving on. While Lucy tracks performance data, Arbor tracks resources, human and facility. Arbor stands for Auxiliary Resources Monthly Recap. So, a little history now. Back in the day, maybe not this far back, uh, the Office of the Chief Director uh, produced something called the Unit Summary Data Report. So some of you veterans will remember that. Then came the migration to AUX Data 2, and it went to bit heaven. So we redesigned it. We built it back stronger. We rebranded it. And here it is. Armor is a resource snapshot. We update it on the first day of every month. Up in the grades, we show district totals and auxiliary totals. Down in the grades, uh, blue and gray, uh, we show local units and their totals. And these scroll from our these scroll from first uh, northern all the way to District 17 in Alaska. I say blue and gray because the blue it gives you divi uh, division subtotals. So Armour shows metrics for all levels, from uh, the auxiliary as a whole, all the way down to flotillas and even the detachment level. There's a member status breakdown from application pending all the way up to OXOP. We, we show new members in this, in this column here. We show the numbers of, op we show operation competencies, air, surface, and other. We show the three key RBS competencies. We show the four key support competencies. We show facilities, air, surface, and radio, both operational and non-operation. Now, uh, now for our third product, which is the training management report, TMR for short. Remember this? Some of you do. Uh, uh, th this is also once an AUX Data 1 product. Then came the migration to AUX Data. Then came the migration to AUX Data 2. What happened? You guessed it, bit heaven. So we uh, we crafted the new and approved TMR. And here's the front page. And um uh, so select the certification to view from the tabs along the bottom. See these color, these color tabs down there? In every row, uh, yeah, sorry. Uh, yeah, did, did just pick one of these tabs and you can. So in every row, you have the basics. Well, what do I mean by the basics? Unit number, unit name, member name, and member status in AUX data too. Then we have the required workshops for each certification and workloads as necessary. Typically, this year's and and uh, and last uh, last full calendar year. So here are the coxswains, and uh, the coxswains are sorted by district, unit number, and member name. Uncompleted tasks are show blank, and most completed tasks carry an expiration date. I say most, not all. So, uh, some completed tasks carry the letter Y for yes. Either you did it or you didn't. Out of date tasks like uh, out of date required tasks like workshop, core training, and check rides are highlighted in red. Insufficient workloads for currency maintenance are also highlighted. 
uh, in, in this case for, for the previous full calendar year 2023. Then we have boat crew and many, many other certifications are covered in the TMR. And each one has their own tab. Now I gotta stress this very strongly, even though we alert members to areas needing remediation, we are not the rear police. We only report the status as currently listed in AUX Data 2. When the chief director's office orders a rear run, AUX Data 2 is programmed to make changes and to statuses as necessary. That process is out of our hands. Okay, let's move on to the election eligibility report. There's a lot of factors that affect eligibility for office. And this report, which you need a good strong pair of glasses, I think, to read, it covers all the bases. Uh, it's, a, it's very thorough. And from January through August, it, we publish it every quarter. And during our election season, we publish it every week. Core training. We've all been through this. There's two types of core training. One and done and five-year renewable. So here are the ones and duds, ethics and personal gifts. And if you joined on or after February 1st, 2018, the BQC2 course, BQ2 course, I think they call it now. And these, uh, is, and then you get the renewables. These are good for five years out to December 31st of year five. So the overview page shows a graphic summary by each district. And uh, this uh, th uh, this report is published monthly, uh, as I say, from January through August. During election season, we publish it every week. Okay, let's go on to the RMTCT. If you're involved at all in operations, you're going to know this one. Uh, this is important to the surface ops, nav aids, and radio comms communities. And to what I refer to as the Marine Classics. There's still a number of people who hold some of these certifications. So we sort uh, everybody's RMTCT status by uh, by district name, uh, by district unit number and name. If, if you're green, you're good to go. If you're yellow, means renew soon, and pink means you're overdue now. Oddly enough, <laughs> the Coast Guard requires renewal of RMTCT every 15 months, one five months. Okay, let's get into a, uh, our last product, which is something we call flotilla analysis. Here's a sample page from First Southern. Year by year, membership is at left, uh, and members and numbers are at, the, are at the end of each calendar year. This column shows core numbers, that is, those who are current in their core training. Membership is pretty straightforward. Um, how many members are there? What's the trend? Easy, right? So, Here's Flotilla 4, 4, and Seymour, and they maintained a steady membership. Oh, excuse me, I'm kind of, uh, that, that's an old slide. Uh, Booth Bay Harbor uh, up in uh, uh, up in First Northern has maintained a steady membership over the years. And uh, most of these are, uh, 24 out of these 32 are core members. And um, uh, uh, Beverly Flotilla has shown a sudden surge in members, a membership, uh, it, from 22 to 23, 41 to 54. If there's one thing I'd like to see in this day and age is a surge in membership, I'll tell you what. Okay, and then you have, uh, then there are some key indexes on the right-hand side. We're gonna go over those. Index numbers run from one to three. Three means it, uh, one means it underperformed the district median. Two means it was close to the district median. And three means it outperformed the district median. And the three indexes are for the last full calendar year, in this case, 2023. Now, we don't do indexes for under, what I call underpowered units. What do I mean by that? If they're under 10 members or under five core members, we don't, so they're not part of the mix. And these units are marked as NR, which stands for not recorded. So this column shows total flotilla activity or TFA. What do I mean by that? TFA is an unadjusted measure of, of showing a flotilla's total work output. This is what I call a brute force metric, uh, it, it, which will definitely favor the larger flotillas. No matter how determined this little fellow on the right is, this, this big fellow on the left will be able to pull a lot more weight. 
It's just the way it is. This next column shows something called the flotilla activity index or FAI. And for the FAI, we compute the ratio of each flotilla's workload hours to the number of their core members. So flotillas in each district are then rank ordered and compared to the district media. And this third column shows something called flotilla competencies index. And for the FCI, we complete, again, it's a ratio computation, the ratio of each of flotilla's competencies to flotilla core members. Again, we rank order and compare to the media. The FAI and FCI are pound for pound metrics. Doesn't matter whether your flotilla is large or small. Uh, either one can have a good FAI or FCI. Larger size is no advantage. There are three mission codes that we don't use. Uh, zero, one, Delta, two, three, Alpha, and nine, nine. All three have, are un, uh, unused by many and exagger wildly exaggerated by others. We consider these to be unreliable metrics, whereas, uh, whereas metrics reported in the 7030 are a lot more reliable, particularly if it involves uh, you know, you, um, facility owners who want their money back. They're pretty good about submitting them. Uh, some special considerations. New flotillas will always have low indexes. After all, they're just starting out. A big increase in flotilla members will temporarily lower FCIs uh, and FAIs. Again, they're just starting out, but they'll catch it. Weather can affect flotilla workloads. In Miami, uh, in February in Miami, uh, there may be a tropical paradise and Boston might be snowed under. But in October, but there, Miami may have a full-blown hurricane going on, while, uh, while Boston's fall weather may be delightful. Local economic conditions can also affect flotilla workloads. People, if people are looking for work, they don't have much time to do auxiliary stuff. And active duty requirements can also make a difference in workload. The auxiliary is doing a lot more augmentation lately. And uh, we'll leave it at that. I have a, a QR code for those who need it, and all these products are available at the um, uh, at, at the M website. Uh, so everybody can unmute, and I'll take any questions. Yeah, uh, uh, Pete, let me add a couple of yes. points. I'll play it. Kevin, Kevin read the M direct on the uh, the unit summary data report, the Armor report. As Pete mentioned, that's a snapshot. On all of our reports, Pete went through talking about they're done either quarterly or monthly or during election or weekly. Uh, so what's posted on our website is the current report, except for the armor. The armor is a snapshot in time of the auxiliary. So while the current report would show the current month snapshot, uh, people sometimes need to be able to go back in history and say, well, how does that compare to two years ago? Good so point, the man. armor report is the one report where we keep all of the back copies online. So you can go find them. Uh, talk about uh, two other reports, the election eligibility and the core training report. Um, election eligibility is quarterly through the first part of the year uh, with the core training being monthly till we hit the election season. And uh, then we switch them to weekly. And the reason for that is if somebody shows up as not qualified for election, our report will show them why they're not qualified. If they take care of that and they fix that one shortcoming, next week's report will show them qualified. So that's why we switch to weekly. And that has become our single most used report. So just in last year's election season, September through December, election eligibility got downloaded 1,400 times. That's all I got, Pete. Thank you, Kev. Thanks for the clarification. All right, I'll stop sharing at this point and uh, uh, we'll open up to questions.